Hello everyone. This is lesson four with RP creating an RPN calculator. RPN calculator for stands for reverse Polish notation. If you don't understand what that is, go ahead and look it up. But basically it means well, at first you set the numbers in the calculator and then you do the operations. And if you can look at the examples in the test scripts that it gives, you can see, for example, it says push two plus three, then add plus, and it should equal to five. Then push two plus three, push four, and then that should equal to seven, and then plus, and then it should equal to nine. Um, push two, push three, push four. It always starts with the ones, the last ones that were done. So yeah, so like if two plus three, or it's four plus three is seven, and then plus two more is nine, and then same thing here. If you look, minus four minus uh, three minus four is negative one, and then add two is two is uh, I mean one. So let's go ahead and try this out. Um, we want to be creating, we're going to actually want to, if you look at some of these test cases, it actually wants to know if it's on the prototype. So we're going to have to set these functions on the prototype. So what we're going to do is we're going to write, say, function rpn calculator and just hit save. And right away, you should see that we passed one test. Why do we pass one test already? Well, let's go down to the bottom. And it says RPN calculator object should be an instance of RPM calculator. So when they say new RPN calculator, that means that it's going to be an instance. You created a new instance of the RPN calculator. So that's going to be true. Easy stuff. All right. In that, you're going to see that we're going to want a push function, a minus function, a divide function, a times function, and what else? And that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. So Basically, it says push. So push means that we're going to be pushing something. So that's one of our array methods. Basically, if you say let um, r equals array, you can then say r dot push new values, and then it'll push values into that array. So we got that. Now we're going to want to create these functions. So the first one we want to do is we want to create our push function. So we're going to say rpn calculator dot prototype dot push takes a number and in that number equals function. Let's spread this out a little, shrink this a little. Perfect. And in this function we're going to say r, how are we going to access this r? Well, we're going to want this dot r, this dot r dot push, num. And that should do nothing so far. All we're doing is being able to push the numbers, but we want to be able to plus, we want to be able to add. So let's look at our first. So we want to be able to push two, push three, and then add, and then we have a function called value. So we're going to have to write two more functions in order to pass this first test. So we're going to say, let's just go ahead and copy this twice. And this will be plus, and this will be value. And I think value, you're always going to hold the numbers in the last position in your array. 
So you're going to say, you're going to return r, r dot length minus one. Oops, and I forgot this. And we're still failing everything because undefined should equal to five. Right now, there's nothing in there. And we want to be able to add numbers together. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to kind of create, set a new array that adds the last two values together. So what we're going to want to do when we add values, we're going to want to say we want to create that we want to add the last two values so we're going to say let val equal well what we could do is we could pop them off first so we could say this dot r is the op um pop is the opposite of push and pop returns, you can take the last value off that array. So we're gonna say we want value one, let val one equal this dot r dot pop. And then let val two equal this dot r dot pop again. And then we can say, this dot r dot push and we don't have a number here this takes nothing if you can see over here and this takes nothing we'll just return values um, this dot r dot push um, val val one plus val two Oop, and we just saw that we had two tests pass. Why do those two tests pass? Because if we look at it, it only uses plus. And what we're doing is we're taking the, so basically when we say r.pop, if our value was before the array, we had an, before the pop, we had an array of two and three. Then we had an array of two, because we popped it and it's right here. Then we have an empty array of nothing. And then afterwards, we would have an array of five, because we had val one plus val two added together. Everybody clear on that? All right, so let's move forward and we want to create a minus property. So let's go ahead and it's basically going to be the reverse of this one. So we're going to subtract. Let's get rid of these comments for now. And say minus and we're just going to want to subtract instead. And we didn't get it to equal to anything. Oh, probably because the order. The order matters. Order always matters in this. In, and actually that's true because value 2, let's see here, val1, if we hit save, oh, now it ha passed. Um, if we look at right here, if we have 3, so at first it takes the first value, will be the value on the left side of the equation. And then value two will be the value on the, I mean the right side, <laughs> say this again. Value one will be on the right side, value two will be on the left side. And actually that should be the same for addition, but it doesn't matter for addition. So basically what happens is in this case, um, let's just go over it again. We have an array that had three, so it would have two, and then we said we want three minus four, 
and it returned the last value of the array. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and that's correct. And then our last array was 3, oh, what is it? Um, 2 plus negative 1, because that's what it was replaced with, and we would get 1. All right. And now what else? Multiplies and divides. So we want times and we want divide. So basically we want to do the same thing again. We can copy and paste this one twice and say divide and just like subtraction, I'm sure it matters. We hit save and not sure if it, nope, it's probably not going to pass because we still need this times. And we'll say times and replace the symbol. And now we only have one test failing. So 2 plus 3 plus 4, or add push 2 plus 3 push 4, hit divide, and we would have 3 divided by 4 is 0.75, and then we would have 2 times, well, what would it be? Um, 2 times 1.75, which would be 1.5. Sounds right to me. Okay, so now we have one test failing, and it says fails to informatively, fails informatively when there's not enough value stashed away. So basically it wants to say if it doesn't find a value, if it can't, if there's no Basically, if there's no values in there, say RPM calculator is empty. So that's easy enough. So very basically what we can do is we could say try, wait, if um, this dot r dot length is greater than one. We'll do the stuff, else, throw, and we'll give it a message. And pull all this in here, and hit save. Still going to fail. Expected, but we only have, whoops. We only have three things. Ex ugh, stop that. We only have three things expecting to throw uh, an exception now. So actually, since these are so short, we can just copy and paste the answers in each one. Now we should only have two. Yep, two failures. One failure. And the last one, but not least, now we have it all passing. So basically we try, we want to say, if this is this, then else throw that. And throw is basically an error handling tool in JavaScript that you can use to throw exceptions so that when you try a statement and if it doesn't work, it'll throw that instead. All right, so my next video will be on loops. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, anything else, um, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.